I received another package from the folks at banggood.com. Let's take a look at what they've sent me this time. metal box nice little metal box to mount it in this looks like a, a display an opaque display this looks like a circuit board now this this to me looks to be a remote control so we'll build that separately I have a couple bags of parts and I got lots of blue LEDs. And no instructions. This is a large digit clock. You can see where the LEDs go and the components and no manual. So I'm going to uh, Go and visit the website and see if there is a manual that we can download for this. And there's the brand. It's an EEQ kit. It's the branding of this thing. Uh, of course, Banggood, they're just the, the marketer who sells it. But uh, this could be a fun one. Large digit clock. These are available in, in various different colors. When I ordered this one, I think the only one that they had available was blue. But it you can get it in red and I believe uh, amber and blue but uh, when I ordered this one the only the only color they had available at the time was blue so that's what I've got okay I have the assembly manual here it's 16 pages long comes complete with some pictures I printed it in color just because I love wasting my toner and uh, it's got all the parts listed on here so we're going to start mounting parts there's actually three circuit boards on this thing three parts to this we have the remote control, which is used for programming this thing, setting the time and so forth. There's a little clock board here, inside here, that maintains the backup for the time. And then this is going to be the display board. So, let's uh, start putting this thing together. So first we'll start by mounting all of the resistors. How many resistors, you say? That many resistors. About 130 of the same value of resistor and there's a few other parts that were stuck in there with them so we'll just put them back in like the crystal don't want to lose any parts so we'll put those back in the bag until we need them so um, first things first let's get let's start mounting all these resistors I'll be here for a while mounting these so uh, this is resistors marked R8, RG, and RDP. So let's get those ones mounted. Oh boy. <laughs> There's so many parts in here, so many resistors to mount. board actually ten K ten K ten K ten K ten K yeah they're all they are actually on this little board here these ten K resistors. These other ones here are all the uh, these ones are all the two hundred and twenty R and R G there's this in here. Oh, here we go. Might be on the board here. Nope. They look like they're not installed on here. Okay, I got things figured out here. There's actually another value resistor, uh, 330. So there's 220, 330, and 10K. The 10K go on this board here. 
the 330s, there's eight of them, go on here as well as the 100 and, uh, what did I say, 130 of the 220s. So let's mount the 330s first. These ones go down here on the markings here where there's not a, like a RF, RG, RC, RE. These ones here are all 330s. So let's mount all the 330s first. Get them out of the way. The instructions here are not as clear as they could be. It's uh, not much instruction, just very vague, but I think we can figure it out from here. So let's get these parts mounted down. I'll solder them all at once once I get them on the board. These have typically been uh, resistors where there's no writing in the box. It's just and have the writing beside it just to differentiate them. So there's R E, R C, R G, R F, R B, R A. I'm looking for R D, and there's an R one other one. There's two others. There's R D P, and there should be an R. There's one more. One more to go in here. Where the heck is it? Oh, R D right there. So these are the eight 330s. Get mounted on here. So I'm going to bend the leads over on the back of it to hold them in place. So that I can solder them down without them falling out. Now we'll tack these ones down and clip them off and then we can start mounting the 130 other resistors which will take me a while. I can take those of those eight resistors mounted. I get my nice new Klein snips out here just to rub it in and I don't need to use side cutters. These electricians Snips do a very good job. They cut the wire off nice and short. Okay, I now can start mounting the 130 of these little buggers here. We'll do it in uh, in groups of resistors.
So there I have all the resistors mounted. That was a lot of work to mount all those uh, individual resistors. Now it's time to mount all the LEDs and that will complete this board. And then we can work on the actual clock board, which is this one here. This is what's gonna have the circuitry on it for timekeeping and driving the display and stuff. This is just the display board. So now all the diodes are, now we'll mount all the LEDs. And again, as you notice, I'm not talking because I'm doing this all in time lapse. Okay, it's now time to mount the LEDs. Now that's a pile of LEDs. And we're not gonna set these ones in here yet because we have to put a header in here. So getting the iron in there to solder will be an issue. So we're gonna mount all the other ones first. Now the polarity on the LEDs is critical. The longer lead is positive and that goes to the side with the arrow on the board here. The shorter lead goes to the side with the, the line, which is a cathode. And they also, the side with the shorter lead has a flat spot. A flat kind of... Mosquitoes are out already. Unbelievable. I have to get my bug zapper out. Okay, so we're just gonna start mounting these LEDs in place. And I'm not going to solder them just yet. Well, I'll solder these ones in, but I'm not going to solder the other ones. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting the LEDs in, I'm just tacking down one leg and then I can go and turn it over and just press each LED flat and reheat the one side that I've tacked down. That way I can make sure that every LED is completely flush against the board. Tack it down that way and then go back and resolder the second side. So now I've got about half the LEDs mounted. Remember, we're not mounting the two center, what we call the uh, G segment yet, as other components have to be mounted in the middle here. So I'm gonna complete the uh, rest of the LEDs here for the, the board, and then we'll build the clock circuit itself.
Okay, now we're gonna put in the headers. Headers go in from the back side. And then we solder them through on the other side here. This is why these LEDs were not installed initially, right? So we could put these uh, headers in here, mount the other circuits on the back. And now we can put the remaining LEDs in. Now that the headers have been soldered down to the board, I'm just gonna quickly inspect to make sure there's no bridges. And it looks good. Now we're gonna mount the remaining eight LEDs. A bunch of spares left over too. They gave me way too many LEDs for this thing. Okay, that uh, completes the LED mounting of all the parts on this, all the parts on the display. So all the parts on the display board are now mounted. Next, we tackle the clock circuit. Okay, now we'll mount the uh, the hardware on to mount the board. Okay, time now to build the second half of this. Get some couple sockets that we have to put down here, a couple, a couple of uh, IC sockets. Uh, there's a big one and a little one, so we'll just mount the sockets first. Okay, we'll start mount the resistors here. Ten K resistors.
Okay, that's the resistors mounted. And uh, we'll mount the crystal and the diode next. I'm just looking at the uh, the pictures here. That, that's our, our great set of instructions. We have a crystal and a diode to go in. So there's the diode. I got bugs, I got bugs on my bench. Crystal, tiny little thing. For this, I'm going to use the magnifiers. Get the crystal in place. And there's another crystal that's got to go in here too. A bigger one. Where is it? Here's the other crystal here. It goes down here on the board. Another IC holder to go in here. Pico fared. That's a five. Should be a couple of fives and a couple of thirties. It's a 104. That's a 30 there. Okay, the 30 Pico farads go down over here. 30 and 30. They go on either side of the larger crystal. Put those two little caps in there.
104 goes over here at C3. process of elimination to know what the other ones are because they're not marked. I don't think they're marked. No, they're just marked C6 and C7. But there's only two little ones left and there's five. So that'll be these ones here. These are five. Five picoferrets. That'll be these last two ones down here. C7 and C6. Process of elimination. These ones aren't marked but the other ones are. So, the two left, two spots left, and two capacitors left. It's obvious what size those ones are. Five picofarads. couple of electrolytic caps to put in here, 10 microfarad and a, and what's the other one here, that's a 10, and this will be C2, which will be the larger of the two, which is a 100. These ones are polarized, by the way. Sure you get your polarity correct. Some transistors to go on the board here. Got a buzzer to go in here. Positive and a negative side to the buzzer. It goes in like that. So here's the sensor. They want me to bend the pins back all the way around. If we look at the, the diagram here. We have to bend the pins back and form a 90 degree. Bend the pins right up, all the way around. To the back like that. Then I have to bring them back for 90 degrees, about halfway up. And then it goes down into the board. battery and the, the IC socket.
Okay, I think that's just about got the whole thing done now. I just have to mount the uh, mount the ICs. Put the battery. I'm gonna put the headers on here too. So we'll put the headers on, and they go through. I put the ICs in first to make make it a little easier. So the board is mounted with, there's little notches to show which where pin one goes. So pin one for this first IC goes this way, pin one for the other IC is on this side, and pin one for the third IC is facing this way. So they are silk screened on the board to show you the direction that they go. First IC installed. It's all the way in. The second IC goes in the opposite way. Third IC again facing the opposite direction. Okay, now we have the two headers that goes on here. Okay, I do believe that that's all the components. Well, I've got to hook up the uh, the wire for the, i got to still got to build a remote control to, to program it, but uh, that's the components mounted for the clock board. That's, uh, the next thing is we'll get the thing wired for the USB connector and get it ready to mount in the case. Okay, now we've got the, the cabinet ready to go with the back. We're going to solder on the uh, power lead get the unit ready to put together. There's a negative and the positive lead here for the 5 volt source. And one of these should have an arrow on it. Ah, uh, there it is there. So it goes together like this. Right, there's an arrow here on the edge, and there's an arrow there. So this goes together and it plugs in like that. Let's get the battery in this thing so that I can get ready to test it. Okay, we'll put the battery As you can see, the infrared sensor is directly below this hole, so that allows us to uh, set the time. 
So now we can mount the clock in the metal box. Okay, the moment of truth, I found an adapter. Let's plug it in. It's been sitting here for probably about 10 or 11 minutes now, so it's probably elapsed in some time since it was turned. Oh, there we go. So it's showing it's uh, 0010. So it's lighting up, it's working. And that strobing you see on the camera is not visible. Okay, but the, I guess the the scan rate on it is not as fast as the camera. So that, that visible strobing there, now it's 11, you see. Um, let's build the remote for uh, setting the time. So there's the parts, a little couple pieces of plastic for it, battery, and a little circuit board for the remote. Let's uh, look at the parts for this. Pretty straightforward to put this together. Got an IC that goes in here. Got a little crystal that goes in here. Okay, 101. A couple capacitors in here, basically for the oscillator. This is just a standard 455 uh, kilohertz uh, ceramic oscillator, like all remote controls use. If you've got a remote control that's not working, by the way, usually it's that. You know, get a remote control that gets dropped and it stops functioning. It's usually the crystal that's broken. Maybe we'll do a video on a remote control. Quite often what will happen to them is they, they will internally fracture the ceramic element. So if you look at your remote control using a camera you'll see it still putting out a signal but it's not controlling your TV or your whatever device it's for and it's because the the crystal internally gets broken and it changes the frequency and when that happens um, the thing won't control it won't control your uh, your TV or your whatever device you're controlling Very few actual parts that go into this thing. Switches and an IC, a couple capacitors, and a crystal. Get five buttons on here. Okay, pop the IC in. So in order to test the remote control, we put the camera in night shot mode, which disables the uh, infrared cut filter. So we can see this thing blazing like a torch. If I turn the uh, night shot off, put the infrared cut filter back on and then you see nothing. Click, you'll click the button here, you'll hear it click. Now you see it. Now you don't. Okay, let's try this out and uh, see if we can set this uh, clock. Okay, this button here turns on the seconds. 
and I can see that I have a few segments that are not lighting up properly this one here specifically so we'll just check that out it's gonna watch it go through all the segments here okay it looks like looks like they all work except for that segment there in seconds mode so I'll just pull the board out and just double check make sure that there's no broken connections on this particular bank of LEDs so this is the bank here that I'm gonna look at it's gonna get my uh, high power magnifiers on just to look at what is common okay this is the common rail here for the entire bank this one's fed through from right over here Does feed other. Maybe right here on this resistor. We'll just double check that one. Okay, we'll try that. I'll pop the board back in. Ah, uh, hold on, wrong way, it was this way, and we'll just hit the seconds button again, oh, that's, oh, we still have some lights that are trying to light here, I wonder if the LEDs, if there's an LED that's bad. See, I can see this one's trying to light, this one's trying to light, but these ones here aren't. I wonder if some of these LEDs are no good. It's on this. I'll just measure and see if there's a shorted LED on here. Because something's pulling that entire row down. And it, it's common, right? Like they. The same circuit drives the same segment on all of them. So, and I can see a couple of them trying to light. It might be bad LEDs. I've got a few spares here, so, I mean, they give, ex give extra LEDs just in case. I'm just gonna go through there, those with my meter and see if there's any that are shorted. Okay, let's just take a look at these, this row of LEDs. Okay, 0.4 drop. Oh, 0 0.0, I think that was shorted. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, that's close enough, 0.4. This one LED here is shorted. So let's pull this LED and change it. Okay, got the defective one out. Grab a spare. I guess I'll have to get in here with some solder wick and uh, clean up the board a bit so that I can open up the holes and place a new one in there. The holes are clear there. New one in place.
our seconds counter again here. Well, there, now it's working. You can see that. One LED was shorted. So, took out the whole segment. But they give you a spare, so if you have a bad one, you can change it. Okay, now we know that all the segments are working. I'm going to mount it back in its case. We'll put the lens on it and see how it looks. Well, there's how it looks with the lens on. I've only pulled off one of the protective sheets, so the other one on the back is actually diffusing it a little bit. I'll show you what I'm going to end up doing with this thing. The reason I got blue, well, there was a couple reasons, but the main reason I got blue is because I'm going to turn this into a neon clock. It's going to have a red neon frame around it. Mount this onto a piece of wood, probably, and uh, paint this black and mount the neon tube around it like that. I think that'll look it's just cool. Red neon blue display that's what that's gonna do I think that'll look excellent when it's done so now we'll put together the base for the, uh, the remote control you have to figure this part out for yourself because they don't tell you anything about this but I think this is how it works we screw these screws through the back and put a nut in front of it. The longer screws. This is for the back cover. Circuit board goes on like that. Oops. It's controlling it. And then these spacers go on top of the on top of the uh, board to hold the board in place. And then the top piece goes on top of this, with the little buttons protruding out. Like that. And then the last four screws. I don't know what that means. Something off or on. Okay, uh, let's see what buttons do here. Turns the display off and on. Seconds. Back to time. Okay, so that's 23. Okay, that's that's setting the hours and the minutes. This, this toggles back and forth. I'm gonna guess that that changes the time. So, so 23, zero is the time. Press that button and that, now it's the minutes. So it's actually 45. And then if I press that one, I don't know what C on or C off means. I'll have to figure that out. C1, C2. C3 and hmm okay here's the features it says uh, press the middle button to enter the main menu okay we're in the main menu the LED is blinking it's currently selected position after adjusting the hour a minute press the main button to save and exit the and enter the alarm setting submenu. So that that uh, oops. Okay, now this is the alarm setting submenu. It says, and there's a there's a, a there's a five way total alarm. So the first position will see, and the other two positions will display, flashing on or off. We'll switch between the plus and minus. If you choose off, then press the main button. 
direct you into the error correction submenu. And if you choose on, press the main button to enter the five way alarm setting to channel one, for example, C1, the other two positions flashing on and off, and the above settings, and press the, the off button to go back to the main menu, direct you into the second channel alarm on and off. So these are for setting the alarms. Error correction menu, what's that do? First position shows N, the other two positions, so that's N. Off, close amendment, or press the main button. Go back to normal working interface. And it says uh, error correction buttons, parameter setting interface, behind two position display, zero one flashes, means one day, and the range of days can switch between one and 999 days. And it can be between minus and 50 seconds after the number of displays. Oh boy. It's uh, okay, and then safe setting. Display is zero, flicker representing zero seconds plus or minus key. Choose a negative sign, X minus Y, second day, no negative. Really? Well, you just tell us how to set the time on this thing. Under normal working, press the off button to turn on and off the display. Well, it just the, the the translation here just doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense on how to work this thing. Like, what's the error correction for? Is that to correct the timing? Oh man, it just it doesn't make it's clear as mud. The instructions. Okay, C off. See on. It's got five independent alarms and automatic error correction. Whatever that means. And that's uh, is that to correct for if it's going too fast or too slow? Uh, I'll have to do some research on that. Anyway, it's uh, done. It's uh, this is it here. Got it from these guys, banggood.com. Uh, nice little kit. Took a couple of hours to put all those parts on, a lot of resistors, a lot of LEDs. But hey, you know what? It doesn't look half bad. Be nice if it would do a uh, 12 hour mode. It looks like from what I can see now it only displays 24 hours, but that's okay. I know how to read a 24 hour time. We'll uh, catch you in the next one. Bye for now.